understand green hydrogen, its uses, benefits and how it is manufactured. So before we begin with what is green hydrogen, as we have discussed previously, when water is uh, converted into hydrogen and oxygen, how? By the process of electrolysis as we have mentioned before. But this electrolysis, you can say that can be done through various ways. So what is the energy which is used here in case of green hydrogen it is either solar energy or wind energy which is used for the process of hydrolysis to separate out the oxygen and the hydrogen and this process is called as through this process energy which is generated is green hydrogen this process is done in green hydrogen electrolyzers that we would understand in a while but before we begin with let's understand why studying about green hydrogen is so important annually globally we generate a lot of hydrogen and this hydrogen emits nearly 4 843 metric tons of atmospheric pollution now this amount of atmospheric pollution which is generated in the manufacturing of hydrogen can be curtailed if we are using green hydrogen so we understand that green hydrogen can be one of the potential ways of reducing atmospheric pollution now to begin with if we see the proportion through which green hydrogen is produced uh, through which hydrogen is produced sorry we say that 48 percent of the total hydrogen source is natural gas through which we use either the blue hydrogen or the grey hydrogen is produced. Then we have 30% as coal through which brown hydrogen is produced. Oil based again would fall with blue and grey hydrogens. And just 4% we have water which is used for manufacturing of hydrogen. And this is where green hydrogen pink hydrogen and yellow hydrogen are produced. Green through renewable sources like solar and wind pink through nuclear power and yellow through exclusively solar power. So this just merely 4% of water is used for production of green, pink and yellow hydrogen. Now of which we would focus today on green hydrogen. In US recently a plan 111 has been released. Now you might wonder what is this plan 111. The idea is to reduce the cost of hydrogen by almost 80% in US and how the target is $1, 1 kg in one decade. That means in next 10 years, we aim to bring down the price of green hydrogen to $1 per kg. And that is where we can attain a sustainable way for production and usage of green hydrogen. Now, if we talk about a country like India, we have at least 4 to 7 kilowatt hours of solar energy per square meter per day. With such large penetration of solar energy in India, green hydrogen turns out to be a very very viable source. And the state-owned company which is Gale uh, is one of the companies in India which has laid down the first idea to start the green hydrogen plant in India with 10 megawatt as the target and this would be one of the largest plants for green hydrogen manufacturing in India up as of now. Countries like Australia have come up with a concept of shipping sh sunshine. What is this concept of shipping sunshine? The idea is trade of green hydrogen. They would be producing green hydrogen and the excess green hydrogen produced would be traded to other nations and other countries. Now, through this, we can make numerous uh, hydro uh, numerous power uh, fuels, vehicles which can run on green hydrogen. So this process, how it works, there are hydrogen electrolyzers. Now hydrogen electrolyzers are the device which actually use electricity. This electricity is used to split uh, the uh, water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. Now what is 
the source of this energy this source of electricity here is solar power or wind power and then a typical uh, electrolyzer has a capability to consume around 50 to 55 kilowatt hours of electricity and this usage would produce just 1 kg of hydrogen. So we have to make this process more efficient in order to make green hydrogen a viable and a sustainable source. Now there are two types of electrolyzers which are used. One is the alkaline electrolyzer and the other is the polymer electrolyte electrolyzer. Now the alkaline electrolyzers have liquid alkaline as uh, the electrolyte solution medium which has either sodium or sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide so NaOH or KOH as the composition of the liquid alkaline and then we have the polymer electrolyte now the polymer electrolyte usually have a solid polymer as one of the constituents and these two are the technologies which are used but still we are looking for much more alternatives which can be much more cheaper and viable sources. Now where does green hydrogen produced can be used? So three important places. First is transport. So in the transport there is fuel cell stack. Now fuel cell stack would use the green hydrogen and why it is more beneficial than battery vehicles? The reason is this recharge at a faster pace and since this recharge at a faster pace this can be used as fuel station at fuel stations and can be much more viable but there is a major problem with green hydrogen that it is only 70 percent efficient 70 percent efficiency means that we need to have a concept where more of hydrogen can be utilized so we have to actually make it more energy efficient now if i say 70 percent efficient the only thing that is a plus point with green hydrogen is it is energy dense and because of the fact that it is energy dense the concept that it is less efficient would be compensated how when i say it is energy dense that means lot of energy is there in a small volume and therefore more hydrogen can be generated through smaller amounts in terms of volume and that makes it much more energy dense and this compensates the fact that it is less energy efficient now the next important source is where it can be used is heating Heating is one of the important sources for cooking and heating of homes in the colder areas and then again in natural gas industry. So in the natural gas industry, natural gas fire, uh, fire powered plants can be actually converted to burn hydrogen and this serves as a backup. Now this backup works usually during the period when there is higher demand for energy. So transport, heating and natural gas are three of the major usage as of now where green hydrogen is potentially used now in the transport we are talking about incorporating more green hydrogen vehicles and these vehicles are not just limited to automobiles but they there could be trucks and major designs which could run on green hydrogen sources so airbus is one of the examples which has been already powered and is one of the first commercial aircrafts in 2015 which has been released the next is the issues with green hydrogen now there are various problems green hydrogen is Far from the ideal, uh, ideal fuel, the reason being it is very hard to store. So storage is hard. The method through which it is extracted is cost, costly or we could say expensive. It is highly hazardous if not handled properly. It also have a capability to release lots of ultraviolet rays and therefore has to be handled with high care. Even if this hydrogen is stored in the liquid form, it can lead to cryogenic burns and therefore storage of hydrogen is potentially hazard need, hazardous needs to be carried out at a very uh, 
very very um, uh, technical and progressive way the next is understanding the cost so so far the cost for green hydrogen somewhere is around 3 to 7.5 dollars per kg and under the us 111 plan we aim to bring this down to 1 dollar per kg uh, compared to this we have other uh, fuels which have the cost somewhere around 0.9 to 2 dollars uh, as their cost per kg so bringing down the cost of hi green hydrogen is another issue as of now if we talk about the statistics this is very very interesting there are somewhere around 3.25 lakh vehicles which were sold in 2019-2020 in US of which only 7.7 uh, 7, thousand or 500 uh, cars which were sold or vehicles which were sold were based on green hydrogen. So in comparison to the total automobile section sector, the proportion of vehicles running on green hydrogen as of now is is very very meager and this needs to be increased drastically by bringing down mainly the price of the green hydrogen the production rate of the green hydrogen and making this much more viable through better storage and better handling methods and better availability of green hydrogen refueling centers across the nation. So that was about green hydrogen but that's not just one of the fuels that is considered as the fuel of future but we also have another fuel which is ethanol and ethanol blended vehicles which we would cover in the next class. Stay tuned.